Every year, Zillow comes out with their predictions for the upcoming year and what's going to happen in the market and how that's going to impact you when you're looking at buying a home. So they're predicting there are more homes for sale and better affordability. And we're going to discuss that in this video piece by piece. Now, keep in mind when we're looking at this, that predictions aren't truth. They're just the best guess of what could happen. So even if you have a million data points and the best presentation, it's only going to be a guess on what could happen in the future. It's not guaranteed. Okay, so make sure that when you're buying, you're making decisions about what you can control, your own budget and what's comfortable for you and the goals that you have, and not just trying to base it off what you think is going to happen on the market. So Zillow's first point here is that there's going to be more homes for sale. And this premise is a little strange that they have here. So first they're saying mortgage interest rates are going to be higher for longer. And this likely is going to be true based on a lot of economic predictions um, that interest rates likely are going to stick around the 6% range, maybe dipping into the 5% range, but we're not going to see a huge drastic decrease in interest rates most likely. Now, they're saying that because of this, a lot of homeowners who locked into lower interest rates may give in and want to sell their home in the future, which is a little bit of a silly premise to be basing uh, predictions off of. But 88% of people have below a 6% interest rate right now. So people who have a mortgage, 88% of them have below a 6% interest rate. And so what they're saying and what a lot of people feel is that homeowners who have these low interest rates don't want to sell because they don't want to give up that low interest rate. And Zillow is saying, we think in 2024, those people are just going to get tired and want to sell their home anyway, which again, strange premise here. What's likely is that a lot of homeowners are going to choose to rent out their homes because a lot of people have interest rates in the three to 4% range. And so it makes more sense financially to rent out their home than to sell it. Of course, there are going to be people who want to sell, but it's unlikely that we're going to have this huge supply flooding the market just because people said, you know what, interest rates aren't going to lower, so I'm finally going to sell my house. So Zillow here is saying with mortgage rates rising over the past two years, homeowners have been reluctant to sell, opting instead to hold on to the ultra low interest rate on their current mortgage. Many of those homeowners will have their eye on a home with a bigger or no backyard, an extra or fewer bedroom or in their preferred neighborhood across town. And Zillow predicts more of these homeowners will end their holdout for lower rates and go ahead with those moves. So I think it's a little silly to have this point, more homes for sale on such a flimsy estimate of what people are going to do. But it's possible we may see increased supply from people who are saying it doesn't look like interest rates are going to lower. And eventually we need to make a move on where we want to buy, not just dependent on the interest rate. Now, before we jump into Zillow estimating lower mortgage payments, I do want to show you how I can help you. Um, so first, our team works in all 50 states, and we'd be happy to help you get pre-qualified for a mortgage. If you're interested, um, we can help you take a look at your monthly payment, your numbers, upfront costs, and things like that to find the best loan for you. You can go to winthehouseyoulove.com slash lender. There's also a link in the description. And if you're looking to get connected with a helpful real, uh, real estate agent in your city, you can go to winthehouseyoulove.com slash agent, and we'd be happy to connect you with an agent as well. Now, Zillow is also estimating slightly lower payments. So the average home buyer in October um, saw more than 40% of their income. Now, Zillow is also forecasting slightly lower payments here, mainly by seeing home prices level off a little bit and the expectation that interest rates will continue their slow and also roller coaster path downwards, uh, hopefully by the end of the year. So the average home buyer in October spent more than 40% of their income on a mortgage payment, okay? Now, they're expecting home prices are going to fall 0.2%, so obviously not a huge dramatic change in prices, but even just slowing down the appreciation that home prices have had over the past few years is really gonna help a lot of people not get priced out of a home with every single month that they wait on saving, right? If you're saving for a down payment on a home, as that home price increases each month as competition gets higher and the home prices appreciate, it gets harder and harder to save for a down payment and your budget starts to get stretched more and more. As that home price goes up, so does your future mortgage payment when you look at buying a house. So the hope here is that with interest rates leveling off a little bit or declining and also with home prices maybe stagnating a little bit more, that that will help uh, lower the mortgage payments and make it a little bit easier for people to afford a home. The next prediction is that most people will still be priced out of the market. That home buying has already been really difficult, especially for first time home buyers. And it's likely going to continue to still be difficult in 2024. 
Um, and Zillow even talks about the new starter home is likely going to be single family rentals, saying that demand and prices for single family rentals will continue to increase, especially as we see more corporations coming in and wanting to purchase homes. And as we also see people who did have a lower mortgage rate choose to, instead of selling their home, rent it out, we may see an increase in rentals as well. And so again, that's limited inventory for people who actually want to purchase a home and more rental inventory. Um, for So it just makes competition more difficult for people who are wanting to purchase and more supply of rentals in the future. Um, likely rental inventory will come from current homeowners with low rates. Again, that's people who they didn't want to sell their home because they have such a low rate. If you have a 3% mortgage on a home, it's probably better to rent it out than to go ahead and sell it. And one of their last predictions here is that there will be more demand for homes that need work. So instead of there being more competition for move-in ready homes, they're predicting that more home buyers are going to want to look at uh, rehab and renovation loans. So those homes that need a little bit of work um, and maybe aren't as aesthetic, that home buyers will want to purchase those and then look at uh, remodeling those. So low inventory will push more people into considering homes that need work. Um, and there'll be potentially less competition from flippers as margins thin. So as home prices uh, have continued to increase, the margins for home flippers to come in and just paint everything gray and make a profit is becoming less. And so they're predicting here that as there's less competition from flippers and as there's more competition um, in move-in ready homes, that homes that need a little bit of work, a little bit of rehab, that a lot of home buyers will want to either choose to buy those and pay for repairs in cash or look at a rehab loan um, to help fix those up. Those types of loans would be something like an FHA 203k um, or home style that can be really good options for financing rehab costs. So in all of this, what can you control? It can feel super overwhelming and stressful to hear everything that's going on in the market. Things likely are going to probably stay the same um, maybe get a little bit easier in some ways, a little bit harder in other ways. And it can feel like it's like, oh, I just want to give up. I totally understand how frustrating that can be. But really all we can do is just manage what, what can we control? What's in your direct um, line of sight to be able to control? And really, I think one of the first things to do, a lot of people don't do this and it causes so much frustration later, is solidifying why do you want to buy? Why do you actually want to buy? When people don't solidify why they want to buy, they end up just trying to keep up with everybody else. They hear that uh, something happens in the news and so they either back out of the market or they go even harder into the market. Their pr uh, purchase price continues to increase and increase and increase because they don't actually know why. Do you want to buy a house because you need a backyard for your dog? Or are you downsizing because you don't need as much space after kids moved out? Are you growing your family and you need an extra bedroom? Actually solidify why you want to buy. That way you can make more logistical decisions about what you're doing. And I know it sounds simple and a lot of people are probably going to skip this because it sounds so simple. But when you can clarify that, you'll actually be able to start uh, figuring out exactly what your numbers are supposed to look like. When you solidify this why, it's easier for you to be more decisive about the homes that you want to buy and also what your price range is going to be instead of letting everything else just run on emotion and stress. Also, uh, credit and budget are going to be the biggest ways for you to gain control to be ready when the time is right for you. Really getting down to the fundamentals of, again, why you wanted to buy, where your credit is at, and the work that you can do on that to help lower your future interest rate, and making sure your budget is intact. Is, your, is the way that you're spending money actually reflecting the way that you want your life to go, right? Do you have money set aside for vacations if that's important to you? Do you have an emergency fund? Are you paying down debt? And then after that, we can take a look at um, what's going to be necessary for you to purchase a home. And please keep in mind, remember, these are all just predictions. Nobody knows what's going to happen in the future. And we can sit around all day and look at predictions and start to feel all these emotions start coming up inside of us. But really start paying attention to when you watch these videos, when you start seeing information about here's what's happening to interest rates, here's what's happening to home prices. Start to see how does that impact you emotionally. The more you're going to get connected to that, I think it's going to be easier for you to, to make decisions that are wiser when you feel more calm. And so if you start to notice the more that you watch videos about predictions, about what's going to happen, about what's happening in the market, the more stressed and frustrated you feel, the harder it's going to be for you to make clear decisions. 
Okay, so feel free to start taking a look at what content do you consume? Start unsubscribing from people. Start uh, getting away from news that makes you just make decisions based on emotions and not based on what you can control, what's directly in front of you, and decisions that align with why you want to purchase.